So how is, how's your Sunday been? Uh, busy because I'm trying to follow and I'm in all seriousness. I'm trying to follow in your footsteps. Um, I'm working on, or I use Canva. Mm -hmm. I know you're, you're a, a Photoshop guy, but I don't know. Canva as well. I use Canva for all the thumbnails that yeah. I create uh, for YouTube. So I'm playing around with Canva. I actually wow. recorded a podcast this morning. Good for you. Uh, I mowed the yard front and back. And rumors are it's, uh, here in northern Colorado it's supposed to snow tomorrow. So, Are you serious? Yeah. It's 80 degrees in Atlanta. <laughs> uh, um, it's, uh, what, it's 67 here. Jesus. Yeah. When does it get warm? It's always warm. It, I mean, the, the biggest misconception people have with Colorado is it's always snowing. It's always cold. The mountains get snow uh, down in the lower valley area. It, it's, it's beautiful weather. It really is. That's awesome. Yeah. I, would be, I would be there soon. So okay. I would definitely be there soon. Um, I, I have to introduce you because you have so much stuff going on. Not as much as you. You're no, no, stop it. <laughs> no, not at all. You're, 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 you have your podcast, which is Blending Blend the Family podcast. Actually, we're yes, Blending the Family and launching another podcast. Um, the first new episode will come out next Friday. Uh, it's I'm I'm. Here, I'm going to bore your, your listeners real quick. So the guy, I've known John, not you, but another John, <laughs> uh, for 20 plus years. And on my podcast, he's my voice guy. And he and I worked in radio together. He was the morning guy. I was his producer. Right. And last week, he calls me up and says, dude, we got to put a podcast together. Because part of what happened um, when he and I were working together, we were at a radio station outside of Nashville, Tennessee, and he took a job in Augusta, Georgia, which okay. you might be familiar with. Yeah, that's where we have the masters at, of course. There you go. And unfortunately, uh, the radio station only brought him. They weren't going to bring the two of us. And right after that is when the radio station I was still at fired me. And uh, I think about a month later, he got fired. So one of the things we, we've talked about for years is the, the coulda, shoulda, woulda, where we, we really had a great morning show and we were developing um, between his writing, um, my ability to edit Right. Uh, digitally. I mean, we we were on the cusp of really we could have been big. And so we're at the point 20 plus years later going, let's let's try and rec not necessarily recreate, but let's create what we wanted to uh, create. So John and I, um, I recorded the first episode today. We're going to still use um, Blending the Family uh, to, to launch it, do some uh, sample uh, sure. episodes and then we'll start um putting it on another platform or or what have you but uh yeah excited about that um i i mean just like you i love i love the world of podcasting i love it because we can do it anywhere um it's That's it's right. just so much fun it's it's exciting um especially this day and age of technology it makes it so much easier you don't need much actually anymore no uh, where back in the day, to your point, you needed a whole entire radio studio. Yeah. You know, um, that's huge. And I don't have a mixing board. I just have my computer with a camera, a decent mic, and that's really it. And some yeah. software, right? And we just Skype. So, and that's yeah. for, so it's, 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 it's amazing. And podcast has started, you know, I started early 2000s and some people were still, are still doing it from back then. And they kind of dwindled down a little bit. They kind of, that kind of a backseat to other um, uh, media, and then it had this kind of renaissance and really started popping again. And 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 everyone pretty much almost has a podcast. Um, some are good, 
so but the much problem, about that. problem is that they're not consistent enough. Correct. And, Same thing with YouTube. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and I was at um, – my wife and I were at a going away party last night, and uh, some of the people there knew I have a podcast, and they're like, hey, are you still doing that thing? I'm like, yeah, I haven't I, – I couldn't tell you the last time I missed a week. I mean, I missed uh, a scheduling day uh, this past week because my my charger broke, and right. so I had to order uh, a new charger, but that's the only time in – a year, two years, I've I've missed uh, my own personal deadline of launching a new episode on a on a Friday, and that's the thing is that you have to be consistent, no matter if it's yeah. if it's podcasting, if it's you know writing a blog, if it's um, as you and and your wife lovely do the the um, YouTube, you have to be consistent, and I think a lot of people like you were mentioning that they're not all good because they're not honing their craft, they're not staying consistent. To be able to, uh, you know, have guests on their show and asking good questions, they they just don't. Again, they're just not consistent enough, and that's why they become crappy um, podcast or YouTube channels. Well, I think I think you hit a lot of stuff there. I think the biggest thing that people tend to do is they tend to be just be busy, but not really focus on their goals and. Sometimes people like to just talk about them being busy as if that's something great and grand, and they're not really accomplishing it, and there's no results from just being busy. And I had to learn that myself because I'm like, okay, well, I have this podcast and I stay consistent with it. It's just not a hobby anymore. It's becoming an actual job, my 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 career, mm-hmm. right? Um, on top of me writing, and you know, I released two books last year. You know, which you have because it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have probably released those two books last year. And I'm working on my third book this year, uh, my urban love story mm. um, called Brooklyn Love, famous plug. You know, so, um, you know, and um, but again, I'm not writing just to be busy. I've been working on that particular book, Brooklyn Love, for the past eight years um, because I didn't feel my writing was, was strong enough. And once I decided to tell myself, fuck it, you know, you're you're going to put it out there regardless of who fuck critics. You're going to find your audience. They're either going to love it or hate it either way. You can say you're a published author because I don't want to die saying should have, could have, would have, like you said with the radio show, you know. So, but you just can't be for, just to be busy, and you have to do things the right way. It is a trial and error, you know. It is tough because we're in a day and age about of followers, and people care so much about that number and how many likes you get. And I'm like, I don't give a fuck. No doubt, I want to get a, 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 an active audience. I don't need a hundred thousand people to follow me to be successful. But, but I really do want an active audience that's going to be engaging with me at the same time and, and giving me feedback about the podcast and listening. And sometimes the podcast that I do, I may think one would be a, a, a great podcast and, and I look at the, the, the data and I'm like, oh, wow, why is, it doing, why is it sucking so much? What did I do wrong? And I'm looking at, did I present it the right way? You know, but I think at the same time, like what you're doing, you know, you've, you've been on, on TED Talk, you know, you, you're a published author. Um, you have your podcast, you're creating a new one. Um, you have so many hats you, you wear, you know, outside the one you're wearing now, <laughs> right? Go there Cubs. You go. You go Cubs. How do you, and you also have a day job. So how do you manage your time? What does that look like for you? Plus the family, right? So how do you manage all of that together? Oh, great question. Great question. So, um, well, number one, I'm going to, I want to, take a step back on something you were talking about and I'm, I'm very similar with you, Johnny. I don't, I, I I do get excited, you know, um, you use Lipson, right? No, I actually, I use Anchor. Oh, you, that's right. Use Anchor. I use use Lipson and I will, you know, look at my numbers from time to time, but I look at the numbers, uh, as far as, what episodes did really well? Okay, Correct. so let me capitalize on that. And so let me, was it a guest that worked really well? Um, if so, let me find some more guests. If it's something where it was just me, what was the topic? And let me look at that and, and, and dive into that. Here's where I get really mad at and I'm I'm sure you've run into this as well, is 
either on LinkedIn or on Instagram or Twitter or, or even or even email, you'll get people reaching out to you going, oh, Johnny Nomad, I want to be on your podcast yes. because I'm the greatest slice of cheese ever and all this. And by the way, what – Tell me your numbers. What's your demographics? What is how many downloads a month do you get? And 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 I told one guest, and I thought she would have been a she would have been a fantastic guest. However, she was more concerned about the numbers. And I said, I don't play that game. If you're gonna come on to my podcast, it's because I think you have value for the audience. And I want Correct. you to bring your knowledge to share with the audience. And so uh, as far as time management, that's where I, I put that as a priority when it comes to the podcast and, and guests. So if I do get emails, and as a matter of fact, I got one today from somebody, I said, great, send me your information. Let, let's see if we can work something out. So that helps uh, immensely uh, as far as who comes on my podcast and who doesn't. So to take a, your question about, so I travel 100% of the time. So tomorrow morning, get up at about 3, 3.30. Uh, my wife will take me uh, an hour uh, north. I hop on a bus. Bus takes me to the airport. And I am going to Kansas tomorrow. So it's going to be a long day. But I know that there are things that I have to accomplish so right now, uh, when when we first got started on, on your episode here, I'm working on a couple of things more visual because I keep I love all the stuff you put on on Instagram. Thank you. I'm like I I need to do that more. And again, it goes back to being consistent. So I want to uh, put out more consistent um, but thoughtful content. For example, on Instagram and Twitter, because I don't want to have to get up at three o'clock in the morning unless, unless I'm getting up at three o'clock in the morning and I'm going to a speaking event that I'm either the keynote or I'm doing um, some type of uh, panel, um, but it's on, it, I'm doing it for my family, so to speak. So I know tomorrow when I get to the hotel, when I finally check in the hotel, um, I'm working on three uh, new blog pieces I want to get working on or continually working on, get those posted, um, start post-production of the podcast we did today, so it's out on Friday. So I know in the back of my mind, Johnny, what I need to accomplish each and every day, and uh a good friend of mine, uh, Chris Hardy, um, taught me uh, HVAs, high value accomplishments. So each day you have three HVAs, okay? The problem when people have these to do lists, they, they become to do not lists yeah. because they, they get overwhelmed. But if you can come up with three um, goals for the day, it it helps you stay focused and it helps you not become overwhelmed. So as long as I uh, can come up with, you know, three things that will help me make that day a, a winning day, it, it's a good thing. Will I always get to those three things? No. But knowing ahead of time that um, what I want to accomplish, um, uh, uh, Dr. Wayne Dyer always talked about think from the end. So again, by by Thursday night, my podcast has to be edited, done, and so it's loaded or uploaded that night. So it's live-ish on Friday. So that's that's kind of how I stay in perspective as far as what I need to accomplish during the day and then during the week. What tools do you use to keep yourself organized? A couple of things. Uh, <laughs> I'll show you right here. Uh, notebook. I still pen and paper, and then the phone as well. So I I do double duty to make sure, especially when, I mean, in the same world with you, it's, you know, when you're booking guests, 
Uh-huh. You want to make sure that you remember, hey, I'm I'm speaking to so and so at this time, this date. Um, the notebook for me is about throughout the day. If I come up with questions, uh, the phone is more for a scheduling tool. Right. So that's that's what I like to use. I, I do the same. <clears throat> I still I still use uh, no notebook and paper. I use um, my calendar a lot on my phone. And um, you have to. I think the days. You know, when I was younger, I would say, "Oh, I have it up here. I just, I just keep it up here." But up here, you can't really check shit off. Right. right? And you want to visually see your your accomplishments. So what I'm doing now, I'm actually doing a journal daily, and I have it on Evernote, where I'm stating what what I was I successful or not. Mm-hmm. Did I do nothing today? Toward any of, of my projects that I have, I have multiple projects going on. Or did I kill it today? And what I do is I'll take inventory at the end of the month and I say, hey, man, you killed, you did 28 days. You were rocking and rolling. Or hey, you did 28 days. You didn't do fucking shit. Oh, right, right. Holy, holy shit. And now you, I can't complain because I'm holding myself accountable. I can't complain wow, why I haven't seen the results that I want. Because if I, if I go back and see 28 days of me doing jack shit, my fucking fault right and you know you bring up a, a great point one of and I'm, I'm sorry i'm looking around my office i must have yeah. looked out in the living room but i have another um it's from darren hardy who used to be the uh publisher of success magazine and he has a program called uh oh crap now i'm blanking um something about building your best year ever and a lot of things you were just talking about is encompassed in this this journal. So each and every day you set goals yes. and, and you keep track of those goals throughout the week. Right. So, for example, um, <laughs> so I've been off this week because uh, Tuesday of this week I had uh, an endoscopy, which means they put a camera down my throat. And then I had a colonoscopy. We'll leave it there. Leave it at camp. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So I had that done on Tuesday. And then, as I was mentioning, Thursday I had eye surgery again. And so there are things that, you know, throughout the day I have to remember to do. Well, because I've had these procedures this week, my wife and I had a come to Jesus meeting for Tommy, and that was. I really need to work better, or as the kids would say, more better on my health. Right. And so that, especially as somebody who's a road warrior, you know, travels 100% of the time, yeah. it can be tough. And I, unfortunately, I'm my own, I'm my own accountability partner. And there are times where at 5 a.m. and I'm on the East Coast and my body says, eh, no, it's, it's tough. It's really tough. Um, something else that came to mind about scheduling, one of my favorite apps is Hootsuite. And I love Hootsuite because I can schedule uh, Instagram and tweets, Twitter, uh, off of Hootsuite. And I think I can schedule LinkedIn. I don't. I, I prefer doing LinkedIn live stuff. So Hootsuite is also one of my favorite scheduling tool, tools. No, that's that's awesome, and it's it's key. So to your point, like you know, you get caught up in everything that you're doing, and you do forget to take care of yourself. Mm-hmm. And, and the whole thing of you trying to do so many things is to have fun, enjoy yourself, enjoy the work that you're doing, follow your passion. But if you're not living long enough, that's going to dwindle kind of quickly, right? Oh, right. And I'm in the same position as well. My day job has turned to a night job, and I'm working nights. Um, and it has really screwed up my schedule um, to when I'm sleeping during the day. And sometimes I'm not, getting, I'm not getting complete sleep. I'm only getting maybe three, four hours of sleep. The sun is beaming in the, in the, in the, through the window. And maybe the third day, I'm so exhausted that I just kind of crash. Um, but it is difficult. But this, but this is where you have, this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where you have to, to your point, take true account of yourself, all your actions, and call yourself out. And, and, and say, Johnny or Tommy, hey, you know what? You're not doing the best that you can really be doing. Like, I'm not operating at 100% right now. I know I'm not. 
I'm trying to get to 100% of me really operating at the, my finest peak. And I know that I haven't seen it yet. I've seen kind of blips of it where I can get everything in a row to where, hey, yeah, I am working out. I am eating right. The family is being taken care of. The life is being tickled. You know, all, all of the above, just, you know, checking things off and still have time for myself as well. That is key. Because uh, as we give more of ourselves, because now we're giving ourselves to our audience, right? And the audience is also very demanding. They, they want that content. And once you get them kind of spoiled with that weekly content, it's work. It really is. Now, you have to put the work in. And like you said earlier, you know, you, now you have to work on post-production. Mm-hmm. That's time. Now you have to re-listen or re-watch what you just recorded. And that can be hours, again, of taking up your time. And what I do now is, is I have a bank of, of interviews that I have. So I got three more interviews to put out before I get to yours. You're like the fourth one. I'm, I'm a month out. And that gives me that, that that gives me some some time to work on the next one properly. I don't feel rushed, right? I'm putting out better I'm putting out better graphics for the content. I'm able to communicate more with that person and cater to them for their podcast. If I'm just doing week to week, oh man, I'm gonna fail because I I can't operate that way. Some people could probably operate that way. That's that's how that's how unfortunately I have to operate right now. Right. And that's only because my my travel schedule. Because exactly. yeah. there are times, and and quite honestly, Johnny, the the I ha, the reason why I have to do week to week is because I can't trust uh, the Wi-Fi in hotels, and it's a it could be a security thing, and it's also could be it's it's crap, and right. so you don't want to waste a guest time and say, hey, let's schedule, you know, let's do it X time on this date. And I'm in a hotel and the signal keeps dropping. That's not fair to them. That's not fair to the audience. So it's it's unfortunate where I'm at right now. Um, I don't know if you've run into this. I've run into this a couple times where guests say, I don't do weekends. I can only do it during the week. And I'll have to say to them, okay, I'll have to put you on the back burner until I can, you know, have, you know, a few days during the week and we can schedule from there. And the other thing, too, is you're talking about, yeah, because studies show uh, people in your situation that do like overnight shifts, it really does mess up their uh, circadian rhythm. Mm -hmm. But my advice to not just you, Johnny, but to others that are in a shit job where they are working those hours, just remember, it's not forever. Exactly. And, And I know in your situation and I and. In all the time we've known each other, I know I, I believe so much in you and your message and your work ethic that one day, and it's going to be sooner than later, it's going to be that one podcast or that one book that you write or that one YouTube um, uh, episode you put out and somebody says, I want to pay you to do this. Right, so, exactly. and, and that's why I, and I, again, truly mean this. I have to up my game because I know how hard you work. I know how driven you are. And I'm like, I want to, not only do I want to keep up with you, John, I want to pass you. And, and it's not, it's not a competition thing. It's what I have to do to motivate myself to help me get to where I want to be as well. And, and as I always kid on my podcast, I always end the show with, I always say, my best friend, Terry Crews, who I've yet to meet, one day I'll meet him. (laughs) But I saw uh, an interview he did with Tim Ferriss. And Terry Crews was talking about, you know, the competition when he was in the NFL and the competition as an actor. But he took realization one day and he says, you know, their success is my success. And what does that mean? Well, if somebody else gets a role, that means there's a role out there for him. So I look at it that way too, is Johnny's success is going to be my success. My success is going to be Johnny's success. So I am just so blessed every time, every morning, every afternoon, I see something that you've put out content wise. And I look and I go, motherfucker, I really have to (laughs) figure out how to use Photoshop or or Canva better to to get my message out there. So as men, 
we got to stop being in competition. We have to start serving each other to help us get to where we want to be. And that's me on my soapbox. No, I, I, I thank you so much. I, I really do appreciate that. And I, I still don't feel I put the work in because um, I, I, my wife, you know, lovely tells me, get the fuck away from the computer <laughs> all the time. Yeah. And she has to drag me off. And, but um, we, our relationship started by helping each other out. You know, and I think ever since then, ever since our friendship began, it's always been about trading information, mm-hmm. le- le- leveling up each other, you know, being that inspirational piece to one another. Because you've been plenty of times have texted me or we had long conversations on the phone for hours and discussing the next move. Um, what does something may look like? You know, don't worry about the now. Just continue going forward, going forward, no matter what issues have come to pass. And because of you, I, I, to be honest with you, is where I get my drive from. You know, when you have you can play tennis with, mm-hmm. you're going to get better. You know, and it, it's a challenge. Like you said, it's not much a competition, but it's a challenge. So if, Tommy, you, you, you ace the, the serve to me and I miss it, damn, mm-hmm. i get you back. You know? Mm-hmm. And, and that's what people need to understand. When you, when you start building your network, that's when you really start building your net worth. Your network is everything. And when you have people you can really bounce things off of and having think tanks with people and, and strategizing and planning and, and asking simple questions, not being afraid to say, hey, I, I'm either insecure about this or I, I don't know. Can you help me out? A lot, especially for men. Men are really insecure about letting other men know that they don't know something. And we'll pretend like we do know it, right? And and that's where, with our relationship, we, we've really dropped down the curtain and said, hey, we're not going to do that. You know, we're going to just be up front with one another. And every day, I, I'm focused on working on Instagram. Every day, I'm focused on, on, on the podcast. I do have writing time built in as well. And I still don't film 100%. I still, I, can, I can just give more and more and more. On top of still be the professional I am at the nonprofit that I'm running, right? So, you know, having that and, and, and chosen, which is a fantastic thing for me to, to run this nonprofit, um, but at the same time, it's like, hey, I do have passion going after. You know, and our friendship has really um, gotten so much more stronger. Um, we, so we can talk freely to one another at any given time, any moment. And that's what people really need, you know, especially men. Men really need that as well um, because we tend to just hide so much shit. And, and, and you know, and to your point, any information, you, you text me, hey, what are you using to make your picture? I say, hey, this, this is the app. This is right. I'm not trying to hide it and say, no, it's all mine. Like with, with Daffy Duck, when he finds all the Mine, 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 right? So, no, it's like you have to share. The more you share, the more you're going to get back. You know, there's, there's good karma. And the energy I produce is all about trying to help people out. That's why my podcast is called Johnny Nomad Presents. It's a podcast for the people. It's not my podcast. Well, it's, it's funny because I, I had to grab my phone because I, when we were recording this morning, and I knew I'd screw up the quote, so one of my favorite – favorite speakers was Jim Rohn. And a lot of people have heard this quote, and I want to give credit where credit is due. And Jim Rohn said, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So for your for your listeners to think about that, so if you spend your time with idiots, thugs, pieces of dirt, guess what? You're going to be part of that group. You spend your time with people that are high, have, have integrity, that strive um, of of being in service, you're going to be a part of that. And so that's why I, as I've gotten older, I want to surround myself with people like you, Johnny, with, you know, even, even people that I get to meet through my wife, through people I get to meet through church. Because, and, and you know, not everybody that goes to church are nice people and all that. So you, you do have to have a little bit of, you know, radar on. Sure. But I still believe what Jim Rohn says, you know, as long as you surround yourself with good people, you will become a good person. The flip side of that is uh, another 
favorite quote of mine is from uh, Pastor Joel Osteen, and he says, if you're the smartest one in your group, you need a bigger group. Yes. And so I know I'm not the smartest person. You know, r- real quickly, my wife was having computer problems, and she, she, I could see it. I can feel that she was ready to lose it because... Uh, because of this week with my medical stuff where we've got more bills to add on and now her computer's not working and I, I can feel her wanting to lose. I said, sweetie, hop on my computer. Let me, let me see what I can do. And I was able to, I don't know how I did it. I'm, I'm an idiot, but I was able to figure out whatever was causing her issue, fixed it. And I said, awesome. and I said to her, I go, I got lucky. She goes, no, give yourself more credit. Exactly. And that's, and that's a guy thing. That's a man thing that we don't. We don't give ourselves enough credit. You know, I, I again, think that men, we are in too much goddamn competition with each other when we need to be working with each other, not against each other. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. You know, I think that, that the vulnerability that we have to employ is not taught though, right? We're not taught You're to be right. You're 100 percent right. You know, and and when we do this to employ that into our lives, you're gonna wind up winning. And then a lot of people say, "Hey, how many times have you heard this, Tommy? I get shitted on a lot because I'm a nice guy, or hey, you know, people just take advantage of me because I'm so nice. It's not because you're nice that people take advantage of you. They take advantage of you because you allow them to. Exactly. I'm a very, I'm a very nice person, but Tommy, I will tell you, fuck no, I'm not doing that shit for you. I'm not going to give you ten thousand dollars, Tommy. I don't care how hard you ask me. I'll give it to you, Tommy. But, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> I give it back to you, Johnny. As well. <laughs> I know, and, and and that's what people have to understand. It's not about I had to be this mean, stern person now because I'm getting advantage of. That's because of your own personality and own security and insecurity that you have is why you're being taken care, uh, taken advantage of. And as men, as we become more vulnerable with ourselves and teach our sons how to be vulnerable as well, that's when we're actually going to fucking win. That's when things will change and mindsets are going to grow. And, and that's where we have to go and, and, and drive into that funnel of, hey, let's be open. Let's be a sprouting flower. Let's understand more of what my wife is talking about because she's tapped into her emotions. But for 41 years, I have not been allowed to tap into mine. From a young boy, I've been told, hey, if I skin my knee, don't cry. Yeah. Hey, you, hey, you being a girl, don't yeah. man up. That that becomes an issue where now I probably have PTSD. Probably a small form of it, but I've I've suppressed so much of my life to be this hard persona. Am I really being myself? And that's what a lot of men have to realize. No doubt, yeah, go home and, and you know, go, go to work from the bacon, but those days are over too. A lot, lot, of, lot of men are having insecurities with the guys making more money than they are now. And it's not a bad thing because you were making more money than him. One of you has to make more money. I'm okay with it. If lovely makes more money than me, man, more power to you. Go make more money. I'll stay home and fucking cook. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would, I'll run the household. I, I'm with you, too. I, don't, I have zero problem if my wife, you know— right now we're we're pretty equal and that's that's fine if she made even more money that's fine because it's all about our family it's about supporting our family and i don't give a fuck <laughs> what, what the more money the better but at the same time it's it's the value of the money and what what you can can do with it you know, there was something you were talking about, about being vulnerable. You know, there have been times where uh, this this past, I don't know why, but like these past six months, because I spend so much time in hotel rooms alone, there are times where I'm just sitting on the bed crying because I hate being on the road. I miss my family. But that's where I have to buck up and say, it's it's only temporary. It's about you know providing for our family, and it's again it's not forever. And so, I I, I just I still 
I'm hoping there's starting to become a shift with more of a men's movement because I still feel that there are times where men are still stuck in the 50s and that we need to have our own massive movement. Here, here's a prime example. And I know I know you do this so well with, with Instagram and hashtags. So if you use the hashtag moms, you'll have over 3 million hits. If you use the hashtag dads, it's about 1 million. So I, I understand the Me Too movement. I understand that there are some dumbass men out there. But at the same time, we, not just men, but we dads also need to step it up as well and not do what you were just saying, saying to our sons, why you cry? I'll give you something to cry about. You know, I'm not saying we men need to be wussinized, but we need to be better. We need to be better men. We need to show our our sons how to be better men so there isn't a need for another Me Too movement, that we're creating better boys starting at the young age. And as they progress, we're with them step by step. You know, I, I mean, one of the things I had years ago, and I still once in a while I have this conversation with my son, and I, and I tell him, you will never hit a woman. I don't care if she hits you first. You'll never hit a woman. You will walk away. But at the same time, where are these dads? Where are these mentor of men helping out our young kids today? They don't know how to. They don't know how, they don't know, they don't know how to help themselves. And that's oh, the problem. That, that's, that's, a, that's the biggest problem right there. You know, especially different cultures. I know being Hispanic, being Puerto Rican, going to therapy is is frowned upon. You don't you don't go to therapy. You know, and a lot of, a lot of cultures are, are that way as well. You know, you're going to go talk to a stranger about your problems. Just handle it. Just fix it. But it goes deeper than that. You know, it's, it's we understand that a therapist is not there to give us advice. They're there to coach us. So we can bring out our own answers out of ourselves, you know, and once you learn that going to therapy is a great freaking thing, right? So if a man does not know how to fish, he's not going to know how to eat. And that's what's the problem with the father's sons. I cannot teach my son how to not to be a womanizer. If I myself never knew what it was to not be a womanizer, you know, my my biological, my biological father, that's what he was. He cheated on my mother left and right. He saw nothing wrong with it. You know, he took the cool thing to do. And then I had to teach myself, you need to be faithful. And right. he, taught, he taught me a lot. He taught me everything I needed not to do. So I was able to have that lens and say, you know what? I'm going to be faithful. One woman, that's it. Not trying to you know, see the entire planet. Right. Was be, trying to do. Be a player. Yeah, be a Casanova, like they called him back in the days, right? Right. And so, again, it comes down to breaking that chain. You and I are in that predicament of we experience that movement of feminism from the past to now we have the Me Too movement of saying, hey, yeah, do I have to look back and say, did I touch someone wrong? Did I engage with someone the wrong way? And how can I fix that? And now how, how can I teach my son that? Going forward, now it's not even a question for him or a second thought. It's just a, a, a built-in behavior that he already knows. I can't do this shit without even a thought. Right. But you and I, it's a thought. It's almost like, oh, hold on, let me, let me stop. How do I engage with this woman now? Mm-hmm. Right. And then you, from there, what I do, I just ask, hey, um, you want to be hugged? Are you a hugger? Are you a handshaker? Do you not like to be touched at all? And that's the best thing you can do is just ask. If you don't know, ask. If that person comes up to you and gives you a hug because they're a hugger, fantastic. Cool. You, you'll get a hug from now on. 
you know, even with, with close friends, you have to re- re- reevaluate that and say, you know what, damn. Like, I'm like, Tommy, you're hugging lovely too damn much. Which hell are you going on? <laughs> you, you know, get off her, get off her leg. No, yeah, get off her leg. What are you doing? You know, yeah. but I think for us, it's going to be a thought process. I think for our sons going forward, it's not. Because we, we're teaching that. Because we're fortunate enough to be aware. We're fortunate enough to actually look at the world and say, you know what? And look at ourselves, something wrong. And I'm, gonna, I'm either going to add to it in a positive way, or I can add to it and stay myself, but then it's not actually growing myself. And everything you just said is about growth. You know, it's about also showing your son how dad can be and dad is still learning and dad may not have all the fucking answers. Oh God. It's funny you say that because I had this, for some reason, this horrible memory uh, popped in my head a couple weeks ago. We were taking a family trip to um, New York, upstate New York. You mean Canada. Yeah. Close to it. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, (laughs) I uh, I was sitting. We we call my son and my bonus daughter the Wonder Twins because they they look very similar, and they could be biological brother and sister. So on the flight out, I was sitting in between them, and my son wouldn't do something. I can't remember what it was. Some stupid, and I just lost my shit. And I'm just like. What what kind of asshole was I back then? And I'm luckily as I've gotten older, I've gotten a little bit more mellower. So, for example, when Easter came around, um, I had picked up my son. I said, "Hey, did you bring dress clothes so when we go to church?" He goes, "Oh, I forgot them." And I'm like, "But you knew we were going to church." He goes, "Yeah." I said, "All right." For some reason, I was like, all right, we'll figure it out. Let's figure it out. That's There's it. no reason to go off on a, you know, a 16-year-old kid. You know what? They're 16. They're teenagers. They're still going yeah. through the motions. And you know what, Johnny? We figured it out. It was all good. And so I, I think I'm really fortunate now that I'm starting to understand myself and that there's no reason to get angry. There's no reason to just become an asshole dad. It's about, okay, let's figure it out. What 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 can we do to make this happen? Okay, we'll make it happen. And so I part of me, I'm very blessed that my dad, even to this day, he's a hugger. He'll still give me a kiss. And I love that. I'm you know, I'm a, I'm a big, I'm an affectionate guy. And the thing that drives me nuts now is that I can feel my son isn't because his mom isn't, his mom is very stoic and, un, and unfortunately, so I make him when I pick him up and when I drop him off, he is getting bookended. He's getting a hug. When I pick him up, he's getting a hug when I drop him off. And I know he doesn't like it, but so sad, too bad, because I have to let him know that even though we don't see much of each other, I love you, and I'm going to hug you if you like it or not. There's just some things that just have to be stood for. And I'm, I'm the same way with my children as well. I kiss them. I hug them frequently. You know, and to get that from a man, it does something to you as, as a young man. You know, and say, wow, like, I can be affectionate. And a lot of men suffer from that, where they're not affectionate at all, you know, and, and that's, that's difficult because when, when you're trying to connect with your spouse, even with your children, you kind of missed, you kind of, you know, missed the goal there a lot of times. Do you think it's, and this is what I think is that because I'll, you know, like I, like I was saying earlier, we went to a going away party and there are people, uh, so my, my friend Scott and his wife are moving so obviously, I mean, I'm I'm hugging him when we got there. I hug him when we leave. And there were people there, guys that I hadn't seen for a while, and I hug them. You know, I I think, and this again is the 1950 mentality with men is there are still too many men that are homophobic. Oh my God, you hug me? Oh my gosh, what are you gay? No. 
it's it's just my way of letting you know I'm I'm a man. I love you. I'm not afraid to say it to you, but I'm going to hug you. And if you don't like it, that's cool. We can do the bro hug. We can handshake. You know, we can do pound, knuckles, whatever. But I still feel that there's a certain percentage of men out there that are have that homophobic attitude and it's and it just has I shouldn't say has to but it has to stop we 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 need to be more comforting these days especially you know showing it around our kids yeah absolutely and you're right everyone's on that no homo right so if I do something oh no homo you know but why say that what 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 even preference that for Right. And to your point, if, if you already have a, a relationship with another man, and to your point, we hug, we say, hey, I love you. I have plenty of my older friends that I grew up with. I to you in the call, hey, love you, bro. You're my brother. You know what I'm saying? So love you, bro. And I right, talk to you later. Talk to you in a month from now. Mm-hmm. You know, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, so it's, it, it comes down to, again, being secure with yourself. Once you're insecure, a lot of things come up that you're not comfortable with. You know, and of course, if you're not taught, you know, those things, you have never been around those type of things, you don't know how to handle it. And that just goes for anything, not just homophobia, um, but many things. You know, so me growing up in a city like I did in New York, I was exposed to a lot of shit, a lot of good things, a lot of fucked up things. <laughs> I was I was exposed and um, I had to learn. I had to ask questions. I had to see why. And, and I'm like, well, OK. You're gay. All right, cool. Just give me a hug. Cool. All right, I don't care. I'm not going to hit on me. And if you do, I'll let you know, hey, pump the fucking brakes. Yeah. That's not my fucking style. Let's, let's keep it moving. We're still, we're still bros. Well, it's you know funny there? because, um, sorry to interrupt, but I, oh. <laughs> many, many, many years ago, one of the first jobs I had when I moved out to Colorado, uh, I worked at a call center. Every, move your camera. More center to, to sorry, to, sorry, to, sorry. I was getting too comfy. <laughs> and, uh, after work one night, we went out as a group, and one of the guys, gay, don't care. He was a Kip. His name was Kip. Great guy. And so uh, we were talking, and I said, "Well, why won't you hit on me, Kip?" He goes, "Because I number one, I know you're not gay." Number two, you're just not my type. I'm like, all right, I was actually hurt. (laughs) What's wrong with me? Oh, but it was just, you know, again, I, and I, it was funny. I just had this conversation with my son on our, on our way home last week. I said, I don't care if you're gay, straight, white, black, green, purple. I don't care. I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. You do something stupid once. I'm going to cut you out. But like I said, I don't care. We're all human. We're all on this planet at one time. Why do we have to treat each other like crap? Why can't we treat each other nice? Lack of information. Yeah. Lack of willing to engage. And too much giving attention to the differences. Right? So growing up in New York, you know, you have your different neighborhoods. You have your Jews over here, blacks over here, Puerto Ricans over there, Italians over there with John Gotti. You know, you you knew where not to go. Mm-hmm. But then when you're in a social environment, school, library, the fucking post office, the supermarket, where you have no choice but to engage with multiple people of different cultures, they're in the same aisle as you're in. You're in aisle three buying fucking sugar just like they are. Right. They're they're at the freezer buying some fucking milk. They're buying the same DiGiorno pizza that you fucking buy. You know, so it's really not that different to your point. But it's our lack of understanding and wanting to understand about how different cultures do different things. But even then, it's very regional based off of foods. Every culture has a fucked up uncle. Every <laughs> culture has a drunk aunt. Every culture has a touchy feely person that kind of creepy in the family. You know, every every culture has that one person who's just loud as shit, 
that loves to gossip. You know, no matter what language you want to translate, I guarantee you ask that question, you'll discover those things exist. You have the comedian in the family, the asshole in the family, unfortunately, sometimes the addict of the family, right? Those things are rich people shit. And until we de- determine to ourselves, to like your point, people are people, not look at the surface part of everything, you know, then we can win. You know, people always say, you know, don't judge a book by its cover. That's how we purchase books, by covers, not by the content that's written in it, unfortunately. Exactly. Yeah. Isn't it? So we, we use that saying, but we don't really oblige by it, you know? So it's, um, even to this day, that's where you have the Me Too movement, you know, have, or the Black Lives Matter movement. You know, Colin Kaepernick kneeling and people saying, oh, you disrespect the military. Um, everyone in that, in every group has an issue or agrees with or disagrees with. And it comes down to, hey, let's talk. I may disagree with how you're producing something, but give me an understanding of why you're going this route. Because if I have no sensitivity to it, I never experienced it, it's going to be a little difficult for me to understand it. Right. Right. But if I'm closed minded, I'm definitely not going to understand it. I'm just going to give my spit my fucking rhetoric and that's it. And then I receive anything. And that's the problem. We all want to spit our fucking rhetoric, but we don't want to receive shit. We are very bad communicators. As much as we communicate with social media 24 7 and we consume all this content, we just don't communicate well as a species. You know, and we continue building up these, these walls. <laughs> Vir, you know, these, these virtual walls up uh, to have more separation. You know, growing up, I didn't learn to speak Spanish. My, my parents didn't teach me Spanish because they wanted to make sure I was American, right? Mm-hmm. Then you go in the real world, everyone's like, well, how can you know Spanish? So I'm not American enough, but I'm not Puerto Rican enough because I don't know Spanish. So I'm in this in middle ground of where the fuck do I belong? And it, it, came, it became very difficult to say, hey, to my own people, hey, I'm just like you. I can make all the food. I love all the music. I just can't talk to you in the native tongue. And that's me just being who I am from Brooklyn and being American, because because are Americans regardless. Right. I'm, st- I'm still not American enough. Right? Um, came to the South. I was quite a Yankee. I didn't know a Yankee was a, a derogatory word until I came to the South. I was like, oh, yeah, I love the Yankees. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. And, and, and moving to the South, especially living in the Bible Belt, was a whole new experience. The first three years were very difficult, and I wanted to get the fuck out of Dodge. I said, like, these people are crazy down here. They got their guns in the hip, open carry, buying a gallon of milk from Kroger. Holy shit. And what I had to was stop comparing to both places, what this city had compared to what this city didn't have. And I had to get deeper to the core of, the people who did show me some racism when I got here to Atlanta, it's not the real people of Atlanta. You know? Right. Yes, they're there. But that's not the real heart of the people of Atlanta. And when I finally discovered that and said, you know what? Those are just a minority that think that way. They're not the majority. They, but the minority tend to have a louder mouth. That's the unfortunate part. And as we continue to grow, we're going to get better. Because people like yourself, teaching their children to be accepting and tolerant and asking questions. That's how we need to just have all our children be and travel more, right? As I know for myself growing up, I didn't think of traveling. My parents, the baby boomers generation, they didn't travel much either, right? This new millennial group coming up, they got more passports coming out of the post office they don't know what to do with now because millennials want to travel. They want to go out and explore the world. Well, they, they don't want to go land in a cubicle farm. They want to yeah. be able to, uh, you know, in, in, you know, the gig economy or Success Magazine calls it the U economy, you know, where you can work anywhere. Yeah. Th- that's awesome. I mean, I mean, even what I would say 10, even 15, 20 years ago, you couldn't do that because you still had to have, you know, some type of Internet connection. With the technology with Wi-Fi, it's gotten way better. Yes. Uh, not not in the world of hotels. Knock, knock, just letting 
major chains know that, but it's, you know, it's, it's a great goal in my opinion, great goal to have is to be able to work from anywhere and everywhere and to be able to, you know, my dream very similar to yours is to be able to be home and work in, you know, my home office where we are right now and not have to, you know, worry about, um, again, going to a cubicle farm and it's all about, you know, creating a residual income. So you're not stressed about, Oh my gosh, how am I going to pay this bill? I'm like, if you can build, you know, different levels of residual income, you'll be okay. And yes, indeed. Yeah. No, you definitely will. I think, um, with you traveling so much, you know, and constantly connected because you're trying to do your own thing with your podcast, you're still writing your book as well, right? Yep. You're working. <sighs> when is, when is, what does Tommy's self care time look like? Or are you developing that for yourself? So, one of my favorite apps is Headspace. Okay. Which is a meditation app. And, I use it primarily right before I go to bed when I'm on the road because as I've gotten older, the the time differences, um, time zones have really uh, affected my, my sleep. And so I use Headspace um, right before I go to bed and I use uh, like a 20-minute meditation, probably less than five minutes I'm out. So that's 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 the biggest key for my self care. Um, I've been really lax lately of journaling. Like you were talking about what you do, um, that's something I I need to go back and work on, and not necessarily work on, but just go back and do it because I do enjoy it. it. You know, it's like again, when, like you and, and writing, I love. I love the writing aspect of it. And um, <laughs> there was this job I used to have, talk about cubicle farms. And my routine was I had an hour and a half drive from the house to, to work. By the time I got to work, I was just like, all right, I need to find some happiness. So I carry with me these little these little journals, and I'd write down three things that I'm grateful for. And that would start my day off at work. And because of that, that would that would totally change my energy from, oh my God, why am I here? To all right, let's let's make this happen. So the meditation is key, um, journaling, and the other thing, like we talked about earlier, um, lat or two weeks ago, I was in Lexington, Kentucky, and I found behind the hotel this nice little area where I would go and run. And I use an app called uh, Couch to 5K. Couch, so C, T, F, or, or, or 5K. So Couch to 5K. I think it's Zen Labs. And I use that um, to help me, okay, run, walk, run, walk. So probably those three things, meditation, journaling, and just staying active um, would be the three areas of uh, self-care. You know, I mean, you can tie nutrition into that too, but that goes, that goes back with the, the running and making sure that I'm eating better, not crap. Right. What stops you from not quitting? Oh gosh. I, you know, I've taken so many steps back that I'm I'm at the point now where I'm I'm tired of it. That quitting is not possible anymore. If that makes sense, sure. um, that's why. Um, like this weekend, this past weekend, you know, I sent you that one. Canva design because yes. that's my mindset 
has been going all right more visual the one thing i'm i i'm not a, i'm not i don't like i know video with especially with seo is so key for for any small business and i i don't like putting myself on camera so if i can find other ways to create video content um that's that's part of the not quitting because again i know um with social media i know and i read a lot about social media and as far as what trends what's good what's going to help you get out there so that's part of the not quitting is just learning something new and not just retaining it but using it i think you're right about that i think the biggest thing too is making yourself uncomfortable challenging yourself yes yes i think it was eleanor roosevelt that said do do something that scares you every day yeah because i think i think guys we don't take enough risks and but then again if you look at people's lifestyles if you have a family you have to take care of you have a, a good job that pays the bills you're thinking man i don't want to fuck this up let yeah me just let me just stay put but then you're kind of stuck as well just the standby zone of just waiting for a promotion or a range that you're never going to get. And, but you're okay because nothing's like the, the, the tide isn't really coming in and out. The, you know, there's no ripples in the, in, in, in the pond. So they're like, you know what? It's, it's good. I fuck with it. But when you do that, you don't know what's on the other side of the pond. You don't know what's, what, what that wave of tide could bring you if it comes in. And I think we need to make ourselves more uncomfortable going forward and challenge ourselves that way and take some risks and fail. Right. Yeah, I, and, I love and, to fail. And that's the thing as parents, we don't allow our kids to fail enough. They well, get I, I know I, for a fact, I fucked up on my first kid. You know, so my first kid is trash, right? So, and it's not because that, you know, she's a beautiful person. She's amazing. But I never knew how to parent before. That's my first child, right? I would, I would clean all the bottles and everything and get everything sterilized. And the same, second kid, third kid came, thing fell on the floor. I just wipe up my shirt and here you go, his back, back right. To bed, right? But you then you know, but the bedtime has to be this. Your study time needs to be this. Okay, this this playtime, there's extracurricular activities for this. The first kid is your trial and error, you know. And you tend to some most of the times the first the firstborn tend to be a little kooky, <laughs> and, yeah. you know, and and you want them to be. But again, that's that's what happens, right? And I think once we decide to take in consideration from others, a lot of people tend to, to say, I'm going to do it on my own. I'm not going to take no advice. You have to. Like with the books you write and the advice you, you give, right, on, on, on especially with blending families. It's a, and both of us are in that same dynamic, right? We, have, right. we both have a blended family. Yeah. And we both have these, these beautiful, loving, bonus children. And we have these... These 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 wives who are amazing in our lives that gives us everything that we 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 want emotionally and more. And when you describe in your book as far as how the explanation to other people that you don't like to explain to other people about, hey, why should I explain to folks that this is my bonus child? But then you have that conversation anyway with folks because they keep on fucking pushing the issue, right? Yeah, I'll tell you. The the inner battle I have is divorced families, blended families uh, versus traditional families. And my frustration is that traditional families really don't. And this is where we and I say we, you know, with your podcast, with the content you put out, we need to educate traditional families as far as what we go through. And what I mean by that is, so for example, there have been times when, when my son was younger, it would be my weekend and it turns out he would have a birthday party or a sleepover. And I'm like, fuck that. This is my time. You're taking you, that parent, you're you're taking my time away from my, from me and my son. Right. But that's where I had to take a step back and go, it's not about me. This isn't my ego. This is about my son and his happiness. And so when 
especially when it comes to youth sports. And again, traditional families don't see what a lot of blended families go through. So for example, again, with my son, it he, when they would plan uh, events, you know, for the team, and it would be, you know, my former wife and I would have to figure out, well, who can bring them? Or, you know, does he want to go? And traditional families just don't see what goes on behind the scenes with the world of divorce. Um, you know, and the other th thing is too, you know, there's me, and there's my wife, and then my wife has to deal with her former spouse. I have to deal with my former spouse. Traditional families don't see that world. And so it's, it's hard not to, to want to, you know, slap them around a couple of times, but what? Sure. Yeah. I want some too. All right. So Johnny wants some mac and cheese too. Mac and cheese, steak and salad. Yes, please. Yes. Oh, steak and we're having steak too. Oh yes, please. And salad and salad. Yeah, that's fantastic. Could you? Uh, is it? Uh, you're gonna keep this all in, right? Absolutely. So it's. It's after six. Can you go pour me a glass of wine, please? Yeah. Thank you. Uh-huh. Come yeah. on, So, <laughs> red. red. I don't even drink red. I don't drink white. <laughs> How long have you known me? Um, she, she doesn't know you. Apparently. <laughs> I got to. All right, so, that was Becca. And she's the Wonder Twin. All right. And so, at Easter, our... My other bonus daughter wanted sangria, and so they brought sangria over, and then we bought uh, some frozen fruit for it. Yeah. Yep. And so Betsy made the sangria, and she has two glasses in her hand of the sangria. She's walking over to her couch, to the couch, and her boyfriend's at the end, and, and Tristan, he's 22. Betsy's 21. And so I'm thinking she's handing a glass to Tristan. No, she's handing a glass to, to Becca. And I look at her, and I look at Betsy, I go, are you serious? She goes, mom said it was okay. And I go, what are we, French? What are we, European? So anyway, sorry to go off on that tangent. But no, honestly, listen, I, I, I have introduced <laughs> wine to my children, and my 17-year-old does drink wine. I think if you educate them about the not so I'm gonna do this too not just the dangers of alcohol. Correct. But if you educate them about wine, and I'm gonna go on the wine tangent because Let's do it. just like just like you, I love I love wine, but I love the complexity of wine because when you buy beer there's yeah. no you, you're buying malt barley water okay yeah but with wine you have to deal with the elements you have to deal with weather you have to deal with soil you have to deal with bugs you have to deal with the vegetation there's more to it than yeah going, every every you know, year that wine tastes different that's why vintage is is is, is it's called vintage for a reason because if it comes out from 2012 or from 2017, it's going to taste just as if, the, to your point, the weather, the soil conditions, the, the lack of rain, how much rain, that changes everything. You could have a vintage of, a let's say, a 2010, two 2010 bottles, and you open both of them up, you let them breathe for 20 minutes, They could those two wines could taste totally different. Absolutely. So, so to your point, as long as... Do give the kids these the education of alcohol, the wine, but at the same time they understand the consequences of their actions. If they're at a friend's party and you know they're under twenty one and they're drinking, 
Oh, speaking of drinking, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Rebecca. You're welcome, Thomas. <laughs> I love her. I love her. And and you set the 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 protocol to your kids and say, if you ever get in a situation you're not comfortable with, there are no consequences. You call me. You fucking call me, and yeah. I am there. So, again, that's parenting 101. And, again, if, if we just talk to our kids and listen to our kids, I think we'd have less problems. No, I, I agree with you. You know, um, even when I introduced firearms to my, my kids' lives as well, um, it was a huge step if they were very young. You know, coming from New York, you can't really even own a firearm. The laws are ridiculous. Um, probably one of the strongest and hardest to try to get a weapon. There's no, even, there's no, even, there's no gun stores in New York City that I grew up with. Um, but when I moved to the South, gun culture is, is very different. You're, that that's just that's just part of it. It's just around. So when I found out, I, it took me longer to choose what weapon I wanted than my background check to go through. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, it took me forty minutes to purchase my first weapon. It took maybe ten minutes for my background check to go through. And New York, I think it's a six month wait. <laughs> right? So wow. yeah. So um, and then they would tell me, hey, do you have your, your carrying license? I say, no, no. Let's let's go get your carrying license. Let's, let's I got the paperwork here. Go to sheriff's office and. Pay it over fifty bucks or seventy bucks and get your carrying license and you can carry it. And then I found out that my property, my car was extension of my property, so I didn't even need a carrying license. And I, I can put my my, my, my car as an extension of my property. So and do you have a, do you have a gun rack behind you in, in your car in your uh, Prius? <laughs> I do not drive a goddamn Prius. <laughs> 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 my goal next year, I am going to purchase a Tesla. I have that on my. My wallpaper, my on my vision board, I did for 2019. You know, you know, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Elon Musk. I'm a huge fan of Tesla. But last week there was a, a video camera in a parking garage. I think it was in somewhere in Japan, and a Tesla just suddenly blew up. So I'm a little leery of Teslas right now. I'm still gonna get one. I have to. I have to. I have to. I love no such a tech head. But to go back real quick. So when I first got the, my weapons, the first thing I did was to to kind of get that air out of out of the home that I have a weapon with the children. I had them sit there with me and clean the weapon. We took it apart together. They held, of course. I made sure that you know it wasn't loaded. Right. Several times before I even brought them into the room, I made sure that it was it was unloaded and I put it back together myself again. Put it and took it apart um, before they came into the room again, and then they assisted and I had them hold it to respect it. I think that comes with anything to your point, even with the alcohol. When you teach them to, um, it's funny we talk about alcohol right now because I'm an operations director for a nonprofit called Safe Ride America. And um, we actually give people who are in pain or drunk driving, we give them rides. Mm -hmm. So we, we pick people up, we take them and their car home. So oh, we had, take the car home too. Absolutely. That's wonderful. And we, we drive you in your own car. We have someone as, as chase driving you uh, behind. Uh, so there's two drivers, and you are in your own vehicle being showed back to your home. So your, your car doesn't have to stay at the at the hotel or has to stay at the, the bar or restaurant and get broken into, stolen, or towed, or ticketed, or both, right? And um, again, responsibility and, and showing people, especially children, how to be responsible. And wine is, man, you know, it is an alcohol. You can get drunk off of wine, you know, but it's all about in moderation. And when my wife and I do have wine and the kids are here, we give them a glass and say, hey, we're going to have it with dinner. And this is the time they see us have it at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, probably he's not just popping a fucking bottle at noon, you know, sipping on some yeah. wine and watching The View. You know, <laughs> drinking, drinking some Boone's Farm watching The View. <laughs> exactly. You know, so again, it's, it's all about your approach. Like I guess even with, when the, with the gun culture here as well, I had to show them how to be responsible. And to the point, the kids were like, when I bought a new weapon, he want to see it. The kids were like, oh, no, I'm good, Dad. I'm, I'm, it's another gun. Okay, cool. And I was like, oh, damn. I was, I was, I was more excited than they were. I was like, shit. So, well, but again, I mean, the, the, the but the good thing is you're, 
you're educating them and you're giving right. them also other interests as well. Becca, Becca has her own guns at her dad's house. I think one of them is actually like a pink gun. So again, I, I commend you at least, at least again, it's all about educating. You know, it's not, it's not like you're sitting at home, you know, you, you know, you, I, you come home early from your shift yeah. and you're not coming home to a six pack, you know, at no. seven, eight o'clock in the morning. Again, it's about having that conscious mind and, you know, again, in, in our household, it, we, you know, we're a blended family, so we do things differently, but that's because we have to, but we make it work. And I'll, I'll from time to time, will say to my son, if I'm having a beer or, or a glass of wine, I'll say, do you want to try it? And he'll say, no. I'm like, cool. Good you know, yeah. but I've also had that conversation with him too, saying if you're ever, you know, at a party or an event, you call me. I don't care if I'm an hour away. You fucking call me. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I agree with that. And I'd rather have my kids learn from me what it is to have a glass of wine, to handle a weapon, than their, their best friend's older brother to give them a freaking a beer and say, hey, just fuck the up and not tell the responsibility behind it. You know what I'm saying? That happens all the time. You don't know how kids get introduced to things because they're friends. And as parents, we tend to be dark. You know, um, social media is, is, is rough for kids. You know, we didn't have to experience that because we didn't have social media. We had traditional fucking bullies. Yeah. <laughs> and um, with social media, with social media, so you can, so with us, we had one bully. With social media, you have tens of thousands of bullies. Yes. And, and that's a big difference where you're getting hit hard at one time. And if people pressure you enough, you're going to follow suit because you want to be in, you want to be cool, you want to be looked upon as part of the group. And those things never change, no matter how, whatever, whatever 20 years from now, what social media may turn into, it may turn into something different, may record something different. Obviously, social media, the internet is not called the internet no more, it's called social media now. Right? Yeah. So the verbiage, the language will definitely change. And when that happens, behavior will come with it, and they will be amplified like they are now. And But the issues, because we're just humans, we're the same creatures just you know reproducing will continue to be the same issues we're just going to amplify the issues more because of it makes sense you know what i'm saying yeah i I know what you're saying and and you're right because i you know i remember getting the shit kicked out of me as a kid because i was a smart ass and that was because i was insecure i you know only child all that garbage yada 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 but you're right and it's it it is hard being a, a kid these days because of social media, you know, you post something, you're, you, like you said, you're going to get tens of thousands of people that aren't going to like that, that picture you just posted. You're going to get, Oh my God, you're fat. Oh my God, that your hair sucks. You know, I can't believe you look like that. And it's like, why, why do, why do trolls have to be such fucking dickheads? And it's, it's, it's sad because I don't know. Maybe, maybe I, I I live in my own little bubble, but I just want everybody to be happy. But I know it's real. I know it's realistic. But at the same time, why? Why do people have to be that way? And it's because they can hide behind the screen. Yeah, they can hide behind okay. their phone. Exactly. They have, they have exactly. They're a bunch of punk asses. They will not do that on your face. As soon as you turn your back. That's when they'll go on their phone, they'll fucking tweet some shit in your thread and say, and they're fucking tough as fuck in your thread. But I guarantee you, any given moment, you step face to face, they won't do that shit. There was a girl, I just, oh, I wish I could remember I saw this. And she, she admits it, she's overweight, but she's trying. God bless her. She is trying. She was, uh, they're showing her in a ballet class and that, that girl can move. And so she had posted stuff on, on social media and all these haters came out. God bless this girl. And I wish I could remember again who she was, but she reversed engineered it. 
And when people would send her negative uh, comments, she'd turn around, she'd look at their, um, let's say it was their Instagram, and she would go, oh, my gosh, you have beautiful hair. Or I really like that picture you did. And she would just send them positive messages. And you know what happened, Johnny? People started sending, I am sorry. I didn't, I was, I was a jerk. I didn't mean to be that way. Good for her. Good for her. That is great. It. That's a fucking fantastic story. And that's how you beat evil, not with evil. Yes. You know, yes. you beat evil by being kind. Again, but it goes back to we, we, surrounding we, yourself with the right people. Absolutely. I was just about to say that because you have to level yourself up and level your friends up. It's okay to leave some family members behind. It's okay to leave some friends behind. They served a purpose at that moment in time. Instead, they come back to say, hey, you changed. I'm going to say, yes, I have changed. It's unfortunate that you haven't. Right. Oh, Be- yeah. Because I had to, I had to grow. I, I had to maneuver and, and massage my life differently compared to what I was before. You know, and, and if you can do that and say that to those people, then you're winning every single time. You know, and every day I wake up and I say, I'm winning today. Every day I'm in the mirror saying, damn, you're just a fine looking mother. And um, you're just well, you wonderful. Are. No, I am. Thank you, Pat, for that. Yeah. Please, that's, that's my graduation cap right there, buddy. Yeah, so... <laughs> And you have to say these things to yourself. You have to big yourself up. You have to build yourself up and talk to yourself. I talked to my you know, lovely caught me this morning early early in the morning. I get home at breakfast in the morning. She caught me laughing hysterically. And I woke her up and she's like, Who are you talking to? I was like, To myself. <laughs> and she's like, Did you fucking lose it? And I'm like, No. I'm like, you know, I am a big fan of myself. And I want to make sure that I stay happy even when I don't have anyone around me. And that's the biggest thing. You know, everyone has issues. I am, I have issues, you know, family issues, financial issues, you name it. I'm just your average middle class American that has basic issues. But what I have not let the issues do is take control of me. I have taken control of my issues. I have went went ahead and, and planned and how to take care of those things. And I'm winning every day because of it. And that's why I have the time to see. There it is. There it is. There it is. I knew. Hold on. Where's my camera? I knew you posted winning. And, and, you know, I didn't like that one. Why didn't I? Now I did. Because you're a hater. No. (laughs) (laughs) And, but when you, when you post, we win, that is so key. It's not Johnny wins. It's not I wins. It's we. It is yeah. we. And that's. So an inclusive, brother. That uh, rap, I'm I, talking to us. I'm talking to all the other people, male, female, who have the same dreams and passion and want purpose in their fucking life that want more, that, that are working tirelessly for their families and their sacrifices and, and wants to give up everything for the world for them. But they also want more for themselves. Those are the people I'm talking to. The podcast that I'm talking, uh, the conversation I have with folks are your normal, average person. I'm not going after the Tim Ferriss. Would I love to have him on here? Absolutely. I'm not saying I'm not. But the goal of this podcast is to talk to the average Joe so the average Joe can hear the next person leveling up. You know, we don't get to hear the story when it's beginning, we don't get to hear the story when it's in the middle of his journey. We always hear the story when it's at the end, at the result, when that someone's a millionaire and they have the big house and car. When you get to follow someone from that beginning and, and you can relate to them and say, man, he loves the same team I love. He's, he, he's getting the same colonoscopy I'm getting, and he's still doing his thing. That's, that's, that, means, that means more to someone who is just starting out, who doesn't know how to figure it out yet. And every day you're helping somebody do that, Tommy. Well, that's why, that's why I love listening when you had the other podcast, Johnny, or uh, the Couples Corner. Yep. Because it's funny. I was, it was this morning, it was this morning at church. And I started thinking about, cause I knew you and I were going to talk today. And I just, in my mind, in my vision, I still see you and your wife. I still see Johnny and lovely on the today show. Yeah. Giving out advice because 
I just love listening to the two of you. I love listening, you know, to this podcast, Johnny Nomad Presents, because it's like you said, you, we, we can all listen to Tony Robbins. We all can listen to James Altucher and, and Tim Ferriss and Mark Marin and Gary V and Gary V. And, you know, but love Gary. But you're right. It's that's why, you know, with my podcast, that's why I love finding people that are on the cusp exactly. that are it's about to take that jump. Yeah, okay. this is yeah. So the authors that this is their very first book um, and they're they're getting ready to promote it. And, you know, you and I are helping them get to that next level. I mean, um, I had I had one guest on and oh, my gosh, her book is just blowing up, blowing up. And I and I can say. I had her on the podcast. And that's that's the best thing for me as well when I can tell people, you know what? When I speak to these underground hip hop artists and they have some fantastic music. And when they do blow up, I'm gonna say that to your point, yeah. I was able to find them. I yeah. was a fan of theirs when they were just coming up. I got to speak to them before they got on the on all the award shows. I got to find their true self and what they were going through. And I have that forever. It's going to be on the, the internet or social media forever now. You know, yeah. that, that, that interview. And it's an amazing thing. It's a, it's a concept that I was doing the podcast, and Lovely and I just finished the podcast last week. When we, we actually posted it last week. We actually had our son Jacob on, and he was, he's hilarious. If we get a millennial perspective, we were talking about some politics. We don't want to talk about politics, but just. We we're compelled to because it's so dynamic right now, the spread of, of people just coming up to be president or want to be president. And um, as 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 we continue to grow in our in our journey, I want people to understand that they're following my journey as well. I'm in the beginning stages, right? I, I'm just figuring things out just like they are. And my my purpose is something that I just found last year that I already already had. I just didn't have a, a proper faith in myself or belief enough that I can go ahead and do it. I doubted myself. And so the podcast, when you listen to different folks talk and speak and they see how they're making things happen, it's really to you to self-reflect and say, hey, if they can do it, then why not? I, I can't take a chance on myself then. You know, and this is where I, I really, again, feel blessed and that is, and, and you and I are in, in similar situation, and that is we both have awesome wives that remind us that we are, yeah, I started sneaking by. I started sneaking by, and can she hear me? No, she can't hear oh, you. She can't. Oh, bummer. Um, <laughs> Tommy says so. She said hi. <laughs> <laughs> because... We do need to be reminded, Johnny. We do need to be reminded from time to time that, you know what? <laughs> we were we were driving to church this morning, and the radio station we were listening to was playing in, uh, an old replay of Casey Kasem. And one of my my other friend John does a great Casey Kasem impersonation, and he would always say, "Keep reaching for the stars and keep your hands out of your pants." <laughs> and so I said that, and she just looked at me like, you're a fucking idiot. But I am so blessed to have her in my life to remind me from time to time, yes, I'm a fucking idiot. But at the same time, I'm still a good guy. I'm a good dad. You know, I'll hit those rock bottom days where I just, you know, I miss my son. And she'll say, you're a good dad. And so, you know, to your point about building your own faith and confidence it goes back to you got to surround yourself and this is to all the listeners out there you have to surround yourself with good people you you just have to if you want to succeed in life you you can't be hanging out with dumbasses you have to have people that are in your corner but at the same time and this is where this is where i love our friendship 
because there was a time where you were just texting me and you were in my face. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I needed this. I need that motherfucker to tell me the truth. Yeah, he did. <laughs> and so again, how, how, how did that make you feel? Let's, let's put it out there. Are you putting me on the couch? Abs- absolutely. How did that make you feel, Tommy? You know when you what? read it, what was your first your first feeling when you actually read it? Who the fuck tell me? I, I needed I needed my ass kicked. I did need it because I can specifically remember it was about not not doing enough. It was about Hemin and Han, and you're like, just fucking do it. Who cares? And it, it just goes back to, you know, you, you can you can take you know, the world of social media and incorporate into your life and do A-B testing. So you can do, you can try this, this, and this. If it works, keep doing this and this. If it doesn't, go to plan B and try this, this, and this. And so things weren't working out for me. And you're like, try something else. I'm like, oh, yeah, fuck. Yeah, okay. But it, it goes back to, it, it goes back to, not men being men. It's about men actually caring about each other. Absolutely. And it's it's about, again, just surround yourself with good fucking people. But you, you, know? have, to be, you have to be willing enough to accept that conversation we had. Oh, yeah. You have oh, to be yeah. willing enough to, if you ask that question, are you ready for the answer? Answer, yes. Exactly. And if you're not ready for the answer, then fucking asking a question. Yeah. And and I and you know, every time we, we we open ourselves to each other that way, our friendship, our relationship becomes stronger and stronger because of those 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 moments in time that we have. And we found we find you know, new respect for one another and say, damn, you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna hold you to the fire, Tommy. The same way you hold me to the fire. You know, you, you text me so much information, like, damn, he didn't have to share that. Fuck, you know, you text me these articles like a week or two ago. You send me emails. I'm like, yeah, I got to read all this shit. I said, I've got to find the time. And well, I do. It's like, you know, Tommy's fucking sending it to me. If, if you didn't care, you wouldn't share. No, and, and you're right. Because, again, it goes back to my vision of you and your wife of of and Terry Crews. Your success is my success. Absolutely. And I want you and Lovely to to be... I want you to be living the life you were meant to live. And I know I believe in you and I believe in lovely and I believe in your cause and I believe in anything and everything you do. And, but again, when it comes to serving each other, here, here's an example. So the industry I work in, I work in the, Automotive industry. Right. And I'm sorry, if if you're a car salesman, um, I, I don't have a lot of respect for you. And I'm sorry. And it's because of what I've encountered. I've got, well, I've got family that's in the car business. And I don't trust them as far as I can throw them. And right. so, unfortunately, in that world, it's a lying, cheating, stealing world. All right. So if if you if you come from that world, unfortunately, it's a no win situation. So they don't share a lot of information in that world, including my coworkers, because a lot of my coworkers have come from that world. Right. So they're like, if you don't know it, fuck you. Yeah. So I'm in the mindset if I see something that I know it's going to help, not just you, Johnny. But my other friends, I'm going to send that information because if it's one little nugget, bam, I have a friend who she actually started off as a, as a friend, became a coaching client, and is still a friend. And on Instagram, she was saying hello from New York City. I said, oh, my gosh, you got that speaking gig. She goes, no, they didn't select me. And I said, oh, that's too bad, but keep keep plugging along. And she said, 
I'm way better than two thirds of the speakers here. I said, here's what you do. When you come back to Colorado, do some lunch and learns. Keep yep. building, keep moving forward. Absolutely. They were on that stage because somebody picked them. You didn't get picked. Oh, well, but don't dwell on it. Keep moving forward. So I, I will not be of service if I don't share information. So when I find information, I have to share it. I just, I just have to because I want other people to be successful. Yeah, absolutely. And when you care that much, that karma, that good energy you're putting out there is going to come back to you. The universe is going to open up and just pour greatness on top of me. And as it is, everything that I believe that I'm going through, that you're going through, is part of the journey. It's part of the process. And yes, we have our goals. And I tell folks, the goal, the goal is great to have because you want to have some place to go to. But once you hit that goal, once you, you hit that summit, then what? What is your next journey after that? And you have to keep yourself going. I'm in love so much with the process now. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm in, in fact with the process. It gives me the energy. And when I, now when I'm setting my goals and things happen, and I'm like, shit, this is fantastic. I don't question it anymore. And in the beginning, I did. Like, oh, shit, it worked. Or why is it working? Is it because of this? Like, no, it's fucking because of me. I'm putting the fucking time in. I'm putting all the work in. I'm fucking grinding. Every fucking day, all day long, you know, you're so lovely, sneak by. Yeah. The, the respect she has for, because I'm having a podcast, you know what I'm saying? It's huge. The family, there's seven of us that live here. You don't hear peep. When they know dad is on the podcast, this is for the better of our family going forward. This is the future that we're going to produce something together from. And that's where you have to grind every fucking day. And I'm lucky enough to have a person, my partner, that believes in me, that believes in the vision, and I, I reciprocate that back to her as well. Yes, and that's key. Absolutely. And that's where people have to understand that when you tell your friends and family about your passion and how you're going to quit your job or you're going to go after the thing you always want to be, and they don't understand it, that's okay. Then of course, I understand it. It's not their vision. It's not their dream. Okay? They're going to doubt you. That's okay. They're supposed to because it's a test for you to move forward. If you don't have those doubters up front and you fall to them, then it wasn't meant to be for you to go move forward. Then. But if you go ahead and move forward anyway with those doubters, with those close people right behind you doubting you, and you can separate yourself and continue moving forward, then you fucking really won the game. And then they become your, your fans because now you're successful. So I knew you can do it. I always thought you had something about you, right? That shit always fucking comes up. Yeah. Oh, you I know? believe it. I knew you were going to do it. Yeah, yeah, sure. I was in yeah. your car the whole time. Yeah. Sure. It happens. You weren't. It, exactly. Yeah. And that's what I'm talking about, you know, with, with what we're doing, how we, our partnership is. Um, it's amazing. I, I wouldn't trade our friendship for the world. I love how we met. We met on social media. Yeah. You know? But see, that's but that's the thing, and I learned this from. Uh, I'm going to call him a mentor. Um, his name is Kevin Knebel. Kevin Knebel, and you'll find you find him on mostly on LinkedIn, because uh, he is a international speaker on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. And Kevin taught me that. He taught me, you know, it's great to go, you know, on the phone. And like somebody's Instagram or Twitter or even on LinkedIn, but it's taking it to the next step. It's it's reaching out to those people. You know, I I, I know it was on Instagram. Somehow on Instagram we found each other. Right. But at the same time, I don't know who did what, and I don't give a fuck because it was this is where we're at now. Yeah. We have this connection and, you know, we, you know, to allow your listeners, we have yet to physically meet. Right. But it's like you said earlier, we've been on phone calls two hours. We've been doing this, this podcast for two hours. <laughs> I mean, but these are the things that you build off of social media. It's not just liking somebody's picture 
it's keep moving forward, moving the conversation forward. It's liking it, maybe commenting it, DMing it. And then from there, let's have a real phone conversation. Are you in my area? Yeah, let's have coffee. You know, right. so I, I think that's that's a problem in my my view is that people, like you were saying earlier, hide behind their phones. They hide behind the, the social media versus taking a step further and building a connection and building a lifelong connection, which well, I think we have. Yeah, we do. And the other biggest thing people have to learn as well is that they have to get out of their own way. Yes. And they, and they can't be afraid of, of success. There's a lot of people that see the success coming or they, they see a glimpse of it and they get shocked. And then they say, damn, I'm not ready. Yes, the fuck you are. When, hey, when, I, when I started the podcast, I was talking to myself, <laughs> right? And I needed a guest. I was like, I gotta get me a fucking guest. What I did was, I, I, I'm going through Instagram. I'm just scrolling and saying, I need a guest. Not even thinking that the, the very um, app that I'm using right now has millions of people on it. Yeah. And I'm like, why? And then it dawned on me, dude, just DM somebody. Slide into their fucking DM and say, hey, come on my podcast. But first I had to make sure that I vetted them and, and that I had a genuine interest of them. So everybody I interview. I've been a follower for, for, for some time and I've watched that person grow. So you know what? Yeah, I, I dig you. I could fuck with you. Let's, let's put you on the podcast. And when I did that and the person said, yes, I was like, oh shit, I wasn't expecting that. Yes. Yeah. And I had, I didn't have no way to record them because they were across the country. I said, how the fuck am I going to record them? I had one week to figure that shit out. I, I figured it out within two days, uh, how to make that shit happen. When your when your back is against the wall, in any condition, you're gonna to to figure that shit out. You have no choice to put your back against the wall and see how you will figure things out and become that MacGyver that you need to be, where you can make something out of a fucking can and a fucking pocket knife. Well, and it will work. I, I look at uh, Reed Hoffman, who created LinkedIn. He he talks about uh, what does it mean to be an op- uh, entrepreneur. And he says, it's like jumping off a cliff and then building an airplane. So, like you said, you had two days to figure that out. Well, you figured it out. You know, it's funny because there's a lot of things when it comes to, let's let's see, we'll stay in the podcast space. There are a lot of things in the podcast space that it's still new. And you still have to figure things out. And so it's like, it's fun. It's fun fun to figure out and go, oh my God, this worked. Oh my God, this worked. I was able to record this guest and this guest and and edit this and do the it's like wow. And then when you do have those failures, you go, all right, what did I learn? How do I fix this next time? So yeah. you know, I I agree. I just I, I just totally agree with I've been I, I've been I've been really lucky that the fact that um when I interview guests they recommend somebody else. And they're like, hey, I, I love your podcast, man. I have This person has a great story. And I talk to that person. I send them an email. Hey, let me get some more information. We're chatting a little more. I say, no, yeah, this, this story is valid. valid. Let's, let's put you on. Let's, let's have these people really listen to your story. And it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's funny because this is my education for me. You know, I don't have a university degree. I, you know, I have an eighth grade education. University of Hard Knocks. Yeah, that's it. You know, and I, I dropped out of high school within two months of going to high school, you know, and everything I am self-taught. And um, for me now to be an operations director of a nonprofit, you know, it's, that's huge. Right. I, 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 that's, I commend myself like, wow, you know, you, you really came a long fucking way from the projects of Brooklyn. Right. And not to just toot my own horn, but you know what? Sometimes you have to realize where you came from and okay, where, where you're at right now and see how you, you made it happen. And now that my second half of my life, my goal is to, yes, be that entrepreneur that I know that I can be because I ran everybody else's fucking business. I can run my own business now <laughs> and, yeah. and, you know, and, and say, hey, let's find a way how to make that income change to where it's you trading your time for money to where now you're creating for money. And 
That's what the podcast is. That's what the books are. That's what the YouTube channel is. I'm creating for money now. And having the sponsor already with Anchor is huge. You know, so things are things are working. Things are, things are coming along. Um, are they are they slow? Is it taking time? Sure the fuck yeah it is. But I'm gonna be that overnight success within five years. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, it, that's, that's, it, it takes time to build it. And you have to understand that. You have to always, always just look back and say, hey, where was that last year? Last year I had put out podcasts and the only person listening to it was only me and you. I would have two fucking listens all the time. And I was like, that's me. The other one is not even my fucking wife. It's Tommy. <laughs> my wife was not even fucking listening to me. Well, I mean, as you were just saying, I mean, life, life's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Yeah. And so there are times where we do have to take a step back and go, all right, this this isn't happening as, as fast as I want it, but that's okay. It's it's yeah. it, like you were saying, it's the process. The process. The man. process is fun. The process fun is fun. fun. Yeah. I think what I get to do, it's my day off. Is your day off? What are we doing right now? Yeah. We're, we're 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 so driven to do this podcast. We're so driven to do the things that we're doing that, yes, it's going to tap into some times that you have to be off. Like, you know, I rescheduled with you because I had to spend time with the wife. She got some tickets. I was like, hey. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's let's reverse that one. What did you do today? I actually, I, well, what I worked, go? I went to go to the movies. What movie? The Avengers. Yeah. And did I tell you? The ship sank. Yeah, you did. I knew it sank. I still had to see it anyway. But it was it, it was mainly about me and Lovely spending time. And after the movies, we went to a couple of the stores, just around the, the wrong strip mall, you know, just walking around, chit-chatting, just us time. Yeah. And it was fun just us not having the kids around, just me and her, looking around at stuff. You know, she went to a store that she likes that I had to tag along with. Right. I went to a store that I liked that she tagged along yeah. with. It's called compromise, people. Learn it and, and apply it. <laughs> and it was a blast. And then, of course, I said, hey, baby, now I have a podcast at, at 7. Um, and she said, I got you. I got you. And I have a podcast I'm releasing tomorrow. You know, so that and that, that all that stuff is already done. So I got to release the podcast tomorrow. And so I have to edit another podcast tomorrow for next week. Mm-hmm. So, and I only have one more day left. So I have Sundays and Mondays. So... I got to spend time with the family, work out the podcast, make sure I communicate with that actual uh, guest. And you have to do that. You have to make it work. You have to be consistent. You have to be on point. Um, I had to get there. It didn't start like that. There was times that I failed at my communication with people. There was times that I let my work overtake um, my passion. Um, sometimes my passion overtook my work. And I had to find a true divide and say, hey, if I'm at work, if I had dead time, I need to make sure all my work is done first. So right. I'm behind, so I'm not behind at work. And if I do still get some, have some free time at the end of that, then guess what? I'm going I'm to sneak in some passion time and work on my passion projects. And that's what's going on now. And I think that's for the both of us. And as, as you hold me to the fire and you give me advice, you send me these types of links of information that I may not even think of tapping into or – um, information I that I have, I'm solely, truly appreciative of that because I need that. You know, we all need that. You know, you're always constantly being there for me 100% of the time. Um, and as we continue to build together, man, we're going to win so big next year, dude. You need to be fucking ready. Like, you just need to be ready. We're going to win together. Well, I, I look at it this way too, Johnny, and that is. And, and this has taken me many years to really have an understanding. And I don't even think understanding is the right word. But I have really been building my, my muscle of faith. And so I, I honestly believe that, that, that God will find people for you that you need to connect with. Sure. And so that's how I look at it with our relationship, Johnny, is that we were meant somehow to connect. 
you know, I look at my relationship with my wife. I mean, my wife is from upstate New York. She was married for many years. Her and her former husband went from New York and ended up in Colorado. I happened to just be at an event that I met. I met this guy who is now one of my dearest friends, Zach. I, I had met him one day. He heard about my passion of trying to, um, at that time, be a professional speaker. I want to write a book, and you know those things have happened. And he said, "Well, you need to meet me tomorrow uh, at this event, and it's at this time at this place." I'm like, "Dude, okay, all right." And because of that interaction with him, I end up meeting my wife. So, yes, God works in mysterious ways. If you believe or not believe, that's that's fine. But again, I look at our relationship, Johnny, and that is there was a reason Instagram was created. And I think it was created for people that understood it's not just about, hey, I like your post. It's doing what you and I are doing. Yeah. You know, going back to what you were saying, it's it's a Sunday. You're not getting paid for this podcast. I'm not getting paid for this podcast. Again, this is our passion project until until somebody says, oh, my God, Johnny, I love Johnny, Pre- Johnny Nomad Presents. I love Couples Corner. I love blending the family. We need to do something on a bigger scale. Correct. So, so I, I love, you know, years ago I heard an interview with Tim Ferriss, and he says, it just takes one. And in, in, in our situation, it takes that one podcast to get us to the next level. It takes Correct. that one blog post. It takes that next book. It takes that next YouTube uh, video episode. It just takes one. That's yeah. all it is. And then you become that five-year overnight success. Absolutely. I, I totally agree with that. And that's what people have to understand and take the time with. You know, as, as, as you continue to grow, as you continue to, to, to go on your journey, and you talked about how you're not, you're not quitting and you continue just reevaluating situations, you know, how can you encourage someone not to Not to quit? Yeah. That's a good question. So, um, oh God, who? Oh, uh, Noah Kagan. Noah Kagan has a wonderful podcast, and he was interviewing uh, Alan Weiss, who's written the books uh, "Millionaire Millionaire Coaching," "Millionaire Consulting," a bunch of other books. And Alan Weiss hit it on the head, and that is, you go and you go see, let's say everybody knows Tony Robbins. So you go see Tony Robbins, you get inspired, you're jumping around, you've got that energy and you're there for two days, three days and you walk out and it's over. Mm-hmm. You have to inspire yourself. Yeah. So to say to somebody, don't quit, the onus is back on them. But again, and I think it's the theme of this episode for you and your listeners, and that is you got to surround yourself with the right people. Yeah. So if I said to you, Johnny, I go, you know what? I looked at my numbers. I only had 500 downloads for this month. It's not going anywhere. I'm not getting any big name guests. I know you would say to me, Dude, you just had so fuck up. You just had five hundred downloads. Exactly. Are you kidding me? And then that's how we spin it to you. Now let's get five hundred one. Why can't we get five hundred one for next month? Yeah. And then win again. So you have to celebrate every small win. That's what people don't do enough of. They don't celebrate enough wins. You set up your milestones. You know what I'm saying? Listen. You talked about inspiration. You have that energy. In the beginning, when you're inspired, you know, you have your New New Year's resolutions. People are motivated. Motivation is very temporary, just like adrenaline. 
adrenaline is a shot. If you're in, in a tough situation, you're either going to fight or you're going to run, right? And motivation is the same thing. It's going it's to get you started at that first bolt of energy you're going to get. Now you have to develop what they call drive, determination. Yep. That's what's going to carry you on through the process to when the days are just another day of, okay, I got another podcast out this week, another one next week. I keep on going. And you're saying, damn, the results are not there yet. Because you're not supposed to. You're building the results slowly. It's a slow fucking build. Right? So you start off with that foundation first. Then you start the framework. You still don't have a house yet. It's just a framework of a house. You have to keep on going. And so the very last fucking shingle is on. The last fucking crown molding is in. Then that's when you should see. And you look back and you step back. Holy shit. Look what the fuck I just built. And then you're going to notice how your audience has grown. Again, it has to be active people. Don't go just to have 100,000 followers. You know, make sure you have 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 active folks. You'll want to make more money than the person who has 100,000 followers because those people are active. They're following you. They believe in you. So you, you asked me earlier about not quitting. Yep. I did quit something uh, last year. I, I quit Facebook. And it's, it's funny. Even though Facebook owns Instagram, Zuckerberg didn't create Instagram. So that's why I'm a fan of Instagram. But I had I used to write a column for the Good Men Project. And I there was one piece that I was so proud of. And so I I shared it in one of the groups, one of the dad groups. And like I said, I worked hard on that piece and I was like so happy with it. And uh, I did get some a few good responses back. So I posted on, on Facebook. The very first um, comment was I had a, um, a comma uh, in the wrong place. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> That's what you got out of it? Right. And so what I did was I went in and I removed that article. I was so mad. And I shouldn't have done that. What I should have done and said, hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, you know, showing me I needed to, you know, move that to a different place or, or remove it. But it goes back to, you know, a few things that you've said. And that's where, you know, when... When when the trolls do come out, that's okay. It's a, it's a live and learn experience. So at at that point, I was like, like you said earlier, oh, I you were talking about you know being a bad writer and sucking and all that, and I'm just like, wow, I'm really horrible. I suck. And so that's where you can't quit. And you yeah. can't let other people um, designate your um, your ability to quit or not quit. You you really do need to be selfish and do it for yourself. And one of the things I love when people talk about writing is you you, you write for yourself. I do. And that's why you know I'll put I'll put things out and. <laughs> I'll get I'll get a, either a text, a call, or an email from my dad, who I love to death, and he'll and, and I respect him, and he'll say, "Hey, you might have wanted to word it this way, or you might have wanted to use this word, or, or what have you." And I'll sit back and instead of being heartbroken, here's my dad taking the time and right. analyzing it and going. It could be better. Here's how you make it better. And so because of my relationship with my dad now, I, I don't want to quit because I don't, I don't give a fuck if somebody writes something about whatever I put out there and says, oh, that sucked. Okay. Thank, thank you for letting me know. Thank you for taking yeah. more time. I'm going to move on. Guess what? 
I've got more content to write and then I'm going to put out there and you might like it. You might not. I don't give a fuck. It's not exactly. about you. Exactly. And that's what people have to understand too. If you read those comments, you begin to fuck with the core of who you are and you don't want to do that because at right. that point, that's when, you, that's when you lose yourself. And that's when quitting, the thought of quitting comes in. Mm-hmm. That's when self-doubt takes in place or the insecurities come up again, anxiety. And um, you have to ensure that, fuck the comments. Respond to the positive people. Respond to your audience. Engage with your audience. Or turn ensure, off the comments. Just turn, turn off the comments, yeah. yeah. Turn them off and that's it. Just keep it moving. You know, there's so many different ways you can just go by doing things. You have to find that lane for yourself. But, man, Tommy, um, is the mac and cheese and steak ready yet? I think so. I heard plates moving, so I think dinner is <laughs> ready. So I'm not going to hold you up anymore because you need to go eat that damn mac and steak. You need to take a picture of that shit and send it to me. You know, here's the funny thing. My wife two weeks ago had made uh, mac and cheese with leftover ham, broccoli, carrots. There was actually beans in there. I'm like, who the fuck puts beans in mac and cheese? <laughs> but I was – I'm, I'm – slowly getting my appetite back i'm like all right and then it just occurred to me what you were just saying is that hey dinner's ready mac and cheese i just had mac and cheese for fucking lunch <laughs> you got fucking leftovers dude but but i'm an eight-year-old boy mentally i'm like all right mac and cheese, I'm mac fine cheese that. that's yeah. it yeah it's a, it's edible i'm gonna eat it <laughs> yeah <laughs> hell yeah and plus my glass is empty brother you're you're amazing you're you my brother. I'm another mother. I, I, I fucking love you to death, man. You mean you the know, world. Can I, and I'm going to say this, and I love you, and I, I am looking, it was funny, I was thinking about you last night, and I'll, uh, your listeners are going to get really grossed out. I was in the tub last night. Wow, okay. Yeah, and I was thinking of you, and uh, I was like, you know what, I know I have plenty of miles. I just need to go to fucking Atlanta. You do. And just, you know, hang out with my homie and, uh, and just, just fucking do it. So I'm putting it out there that, uh, before this year is over, I'm coming to Atlanta. That's we're, fantastic. We're going to hang out together. We are. And, uh, part yeah, we need to, we're going to record it. We'll vlog it. And we'll use it also yeah, as a podcast it, piece. A day in life with Johnny and Tommy. That's it. And then I'll go to Colorado, and we'll have a blast there. Okay. That's, that's, what, we, that's what we need to do. That sounds great. Exactly. I'm going to hold you to that shit. So It's, we'll it's going that. to happen. It, yeah. it better happen. Absolutely. Oh, oh man. I had so lovely. You shouldn't be excited. Yeah. Hell, yeah. Oh, dude. That makes me happy. Good. Brother, thank you so much for coming on to Johnny Nomad Presents. And, guys, Johnny Nomad Presents, Tommy Malone. Thank you, sir. Please. Please like, love Johnny Nomad Presents. Share his podcast. It's awesome. And oh my gosh, I'm so blessed to know you. I'm blessed to know you, brother. Go enjoy your family, man. I All appreciate right. it. Peace. Peace. <laughs>